undervolting is a great way to increase the power efficiency of your GPU. The GeForce RTX 3060 Ti is already power efficient, but it can be made even more efficient through undervolting. As a disclaimer, the values shown in this video are what I reached for my particular GPU. Different 3060 Ti's will reach different values. I personally use MSI Afterburner for the process, as it is very simple as you will see. First, you open the MSI Afterburner program. Press Ctrl F to bring up the Voltage Frequency Curve Editor. Find the voltage point you want to target. In my case, I'm going for 906 millivolts and set the frequency. I am setting the frequency to 1905 megahertz. Simply drag that point up till you hit the desired frequency and bring the points to the right below the target value and click apply. To quickly select all the points to the right, hold shift and highlight all the points. Then drag the points down and click apply. Another way to set the undervolt curve is to increase the core clock on the MSI Afterburner main screen. In my case, I enter plus 135. This raises all frequencies on the volt frequency curve by 135. Next, find your target voltage point. Then highlight all the voltages to the right by holding shift and drag them all down below the target value and click apply. This brings me to the same 1905 megahertz at 906 millivolts as shown previously. After applying the undervolt, click the save icon and select one of the five profiles to save it to. I prefer the second method where all the points to the left also get plus 135 as I have seen improved performance in some scenarios. I'll show an example later on. You can also increase the RAM speed and power limit. I have my RAM set to plus 900 with the power limit maxed out so that the GPU can pull up to 220 watts if necessary. Though, as we'll see in the power figures I post later, in many scenarios, this isn't required. Here is the test system. The CPU is the Core i5-13600K, overclocked to 5.4 GHz all P-Cores. There is a 5.5 GHz 2P-Core Turbo. The E-Cores are set to 4.2 GHz, and the RAM is set to DDR4-4000 CL16 with manually configured timings. After setting the undervolt, you should do some stability testing and play some games to make sure it is stable. One quick test I've been using recently thanks to some comments on my other videos is Combustor. This includes a stress test and a benchmark. Using the MSI Combustor 1440p benchmark with the GPU at stock, the score is 3078 with a 51 FPS average. With the undervolt, the score improved to 3187, an increase of over 100 points. And the frame rate improves to a 53 FPS average. It's good to use a benchmark like this to make sure the performance is increasing. Next, I stress tested the GPU. Using the MSI Combustor stress test, the SOC GPU after quickly heating up stays around 1800 MHz with the temperatures at 76 degrees Celsius and the power consumption at just under 200 watts. With the undervolt, after heating up, the card sticks to 1905 MHz for the duration of the test. That is over 100 MHz improvement over stock. Power consumption and temperatures are only slightly reduced compared to stock in this stress test. Even in this demanding stress test, which pushes the GPU to its limits, we see the benefits of the undervolt. Over 100 MHz increase versus stock, along with a slight decrease in power and temperatures. Using stress tests like this is important, but it is also important to play games and or use other benchmarks as passing a single benchmark or stress test does not guarantee stability. I've also taken some power figures from various games showing the benefits of this undervolt. In Just Cause 3 at stock, the GPU is using around 200 watts in this area. With the undervolt, this value drops to nearly 160 watts. The stock card uses 20% more power in this case. In Batman Arkham Knight, at stock, the GPU is using around 185 watts. With the undervolt, 
This drops to 140 watts. The stock card is using over 30% more power in this example. In Recar, at stock, the GPU was using 170 watts in this area. With the Undervolt, this drops to 127 watts. In this case, the stock card is using 33% more power. Earlier, I mentioned raising the power limit. One case that comes in handy is in Severed Steel. This is with max settings at 1440p, with ray tracing on and DLSS off. In this case, the card uses more power with the Undervolt, thanks to the increased power limit. But as you can see, we are still hitting 1905 MHz, where the stock card is dropping to 1785 MHz. A 120 MHz difference. The Undervolt is at 98 FPS, while the stock configuration is at 92 FPS. I also mentioned earlier that the second type of undervolt curve works better in some scenarios. This is one scenario. If you set the power limit to 200 watts for both undervolt curves, the second curve has higher performance as the clocks stay above 1860. But with the first curve, though still better than stock, I saw the clocks drop as low as 1815. In the end, in most cases, the undervolt uses less power than stock and when it uses the same power or more power, the clocks are higher and more stable. We've seen 20 to 33% reductions in power in some cases, with one case using more power, but also providing higher performance. This is a great result in my opinion. From one profile, you get improved power efficiency when the GPU is using less than 200 watts. And when you need to go over 200 watts, there is a performance increase versus stock. As always, after setting your undervolt, it's important to check stability by running stress tests and playing games, while verifying that there is no crashing. Thanks for watching.